And so now we're going to be doing the fall 2021 AMC 12A problem 11. Consider two concentric circles, that means same center, of radius 17 and radius 19. Let's draw them. One circle, two circles, something like that. Uh, the larger circle has a chord half of which lies inside the smaller circle. Okay, so we're probably drawing about, I don't know, here or so, okay? Uh, what is the length of the chord in the larger circle? You don't got a lot of information to work with, but it's gotta be enough or it wouldn't be solvable. So start figuring stuff out. From the center, I can draw to here and here, and that's going to be 17. I can also draw to here and over here, and those are going to be 19. What kind of triangles are those? Isosceles, and when you have isosceles, you can drop the altitude and get congruent triangles. We can call that altitude H. It will be perpendicular and bisect the chord. That is always true. If you have a chord in a circle and you draw from the center to it, it will always be, if you draw the, the perpendicular to it, it will always cut it right at the midpoint. So uh, that's a fact that should be in your small notebook. Um, all I'm gonna do now, we have to think for a second now, it said half of it lies inside. So if I called this length outside X and this length outside X, the length inside would have to be two X because that would be half outside and half inside, makes sense. Then this is going to be X and X. So now we just have a system of equations. H squared plus X squared I'm gonna, maybe should I draw a little bit bigger, I guess? And kind of see what's going on. You've got this, and you've got another one here, and another one here. I'm calling this H, X, 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 and X, and that's 90. And this is 17 and 19. So now to solve, we've got H squared plus X squared equals 289. You've got H squared plus, it's going to be 2X, squared is going to equal 361. Uh, I'm gonna take the upper one and subtract the smaller one. So this is 4x squared minus x squared is 3x squared. Add 11, add 61, get 72. Divide by three, x squared equals 24. Square root to get four times six, two root six. Two root six is x, the chord is four x, four times two root six, eight root six, done. Let's go to problem 12. And now we'll do problem 12 from the fall 2021 AMC 12A. There's a few fundamental concepts in this problem, and if you knew your way around those concepts, it shouldn't have been too bad. Uh, what is the number of terms with rational coefficients? Rational means can be written as a ratio, like a fraction if you have to, but integers are fractions. It's coefficients, keep that in mind, not the X and Y among the 1001 terms in the expansion of this. So what's the first fundamental concept? Binomial expansion. I mean, you gotta know what rational and coefficients means, but binomial expansion is simply the following. If you have a plus b to the n, you will get the first one is n choose zero, this one choose zero, and then you're gonna have a to the n b to the zero plus n choose one, and now the A's power will go down by one, B's will go up by one, and this will go all the way until you get to um, N choose N, and it will be A to the zero, B to the N. Now, things to note, the bottom number of the choose is going to be matching the B every time. Okay, so one matches one. The sum of the exponents on these two expressions uh, will always be the original exponent here, n. Okay, so if we have that, we know that. Does the x and y's value matter? Well, it must not, because we don't know what they are. And we don't, we don't actually care because they're, we want coefficients. So we don't, that doesn't play a role. You could essentially think of this as cube root of two plus root three to the 1,000 power, and the rest of it doesn't really matter. You might be wondering, yeah, but what if there was a negative in here? Would that still work? Sure, just make the b the negative. Make it like, say it was like x minus three. You could make a b x and b be the negative three, and when you plug it in, it will alternate signs for you. You don't have to worry about it. Okay, so 
Um, again, all we're gonna do is apply this. The first term would be whatever this is. The n choose zero, n choose one, always an integer, not gonna matter for our purposes. We only have to consider what happens to the powers of these two terms. So the very first term would have cube root of two to the thousand and root three to the zero. Okay, but in order for this to be rational, um, I'm gonna need to have it be that that number is divisible by three. Again, all I'm using, you guys, if you're taking AMC 12, you really should know these kinds of ideas. It's one third power, and then I can take that to the thousandth power and I get this, but three doesn't go into there. And if it doesn't go in, it's not rational. I mean, you're not gonna get one from over here. So, or you are over here, but that doesn't matter. It's not gonna help you with this. They're two different numbers, three and two. So they're not gonna be able to you know, cross with each other and make some kind of a rational expression. Um, so the next thing is, is don't keep writing this and this, just write the exponent. You gotta be fast, you gotta have a system that helps you work through quickly. 999 and one, just look up here. It's this to the, okay, this, that's gonna work out well. That will be rational. Unfortunately, square root of three, not rational. That's not going to work. Let's go down, 998 and two. It's not gonna work. You gotta go down by threes. Why even check 998? There's no point. If this is not a multiple of three, you will not get a rational. So let's go down to 996. If you drop three here, you go up three here to a four. That is a multiple of three. That is even. I need an even on this because it's square root and a multiple of three here. We found one that works. Furthermore, since we're always going down uh, one, up one, it's gonna be like that, then I probably wanna go down six to get to the next one. But let's just check, just to be 100% safe, 993 and seven, clearly this one's not an even value, which it needs to be if the square root one's going to come out rational. So you'll get 990 and 10. And again, this is a divisible by three, this is even. Those are the things you want. You can see that you're counting by six. You also know this is divisible by six. You will go all the way down to zero, 1000, write it so your eyes can see it and confirm and you feel more comfortable and confident in your approach. We need all the numbers from zero to 996 inclusive that are divisible by six. This is where the second concept goes in. This goes back to like, I don't even know, like uh, Math Olympiad, third grade, the one through five or fourth grade. Like This is an old, old concept. You really gotta know it. All of the numbers from A to B counting by D, D being the common difference, is going to be B minus A over D plus one. So it's also arithmetic series. You can do it with that too, the number of terms in the arithmetic series. But this is just the fastest way to get what we want. Um, 996 minus uh, zero over six plus one. Six goes into 900, 150 times. It goes into 90, 15 times. It goes into six once, one, six, six plus one, 167. Answer choice C, let's do problem 13. All right, let's see problem number 13 from the fall 2021 AMC 12A. This one's tricky, but I, I honestly, if you're in one of my classes, we've covered the, the, the uh, I don't know, the small notebook concepts that you need to do this one. And I, for the rest of you, I hope you would know this. It's not a concept that always comes up. And there could have been another way to do it. This is, all of my solutions are my original solutions. It's what I did to solve the problem. Some of them are not gonna be the most efficient way or even the best way, the most brilliant way. I'm not, I'm not a robot, you know, I'm a human. I, I don't always have the most brilliant solutions, but this is the way that I did it and it worked for me and it went pretty quick. So the angle bisector of the acute angle formed at the origin by the graphs of the lines y equals x and y equals three x. So let's just start with that. Okay, you got this. You've got y equals x. y equals x splits the first and third quadrants at 45 degrees. Maybe that will come into play. Um, we're gonna go up to three x. It's gonna be, if you were at one, it would be here. So it'd be here for that one. And you're coming up to look like that. It's talking about this angle theta right here. That angle is going to be bisected by another line, okay? So if we knew what that angle was, maybe we could do something with that, but maybe it doesn't matter. 
um, if you just try to draw what looks like the bisector, you kind of need to know what an angle bisector is. If you've gone through AOPS, intro to geo, uh, there's a problem in there in the gray box questions that teaches you that the fundamental feature of a angle bisector is that it its perpendicular distance to the sides of the angle it's bisecting are equal. That's one of its properties. So if we knew that property, because again, you've gone through these books or you learned it somewhere else, uh, we just need to know that these two distances are equal. And what point should we use? Well, we will use x sub zero, y sub zero. So in order to do this, I'm gonna need the distance from a point to a line. That's a small notebook concept that we should know. In order to use this formula, you need a point, x sub zero, y sub zero. You need a line, ax plus by plus c. It has to be written in this form. The formula is absolute value of a, x sub zero, plus b, y sub zero, plus c. Basically, plug this coordinate into this expression, take the absolute value divided by the square root of a squared plus b squared. By the way, it works the same way in three-dimensional as well. The distance from a point to a plane would just have another term of c, z sub zero, or z sub naught. And then you would also have that c here, and the constant would be called d in that case. Just be aware that you can use the memory of this to generate the memory of that. Okay, so now what? We've got the point. Um, we still need to have these lines written in that form and they're called y equals x. I'd like my x coefficient to be positive. I'm gonna move the y over. It's x minus y equals zero. Now, I've also got three x minus y equals zero. Okay, so let's start going to our, our equation over here for that distance. If those distances are equal, then we'll know the equation of the point. Why does it matter? Another small notebook concept. Every line, if you have any line through the origin and some point, the slope of the line is the y coordinate over the x coordinate. We just gotta put them as a ratio and we'll win a prize. All right, so what's it going to be? Uh, this one here, it's gonna be c value is zero. That makes it nice. Our a value is the coefficient of x over there. It's just one. x sub zero is itself. So we're gonna have x sub zero minus y sub zero absolute value over the square root. Again, it's the a and b, not the x and y values. So a is one, b is negative one. Doesn't matter because we're squaring one plus one, you get root two. I need that to be equal to do the same thing here, absolute value three x sub zero minus y sub zero. The plus zero doesn't matter over the square root of three squared plus negative one squared is 10. These have to be equal. Let's just call this two now. Let's multiply by root 10. Root 10 over root two is root five. I am going to erase this over here now. So I have space and I don't have to crawl on the ground to write on the edge of the board. So we've got root five times. Now we gotta start thinking. Now as we gotta critically think, I've got absolute value. Do I really wanna do that reverse, reverse thing? Like it could be this one or that one. No, you should figure it out. If x sub, if the x coordinate is larger than the y coordinate, it will come out positive. And if it's the other way, it switches. Let's think this line right here is y equals x, where the x and y coordinates are equal. Everything above it has the y coordinate bigger. And because the y coordinate is bigger, this is literally y is greater than x if you shade that region. You're saying it to yourself then you know that yo is greater than zo, which is not really how you say it, but y sub naught will be bigger than x sub naught, which means when we pull this absolute value off, we're gonna switch it. Okay, so you're gonna have y sub naught minus x sub naught here equals. On the other side, even if you were to use this line, right, y equals three x, don't forget you're tripling the x value. Let's take a point on it. We have that point one, three. If you triple one, is it greater than or equal to three? You bet it is. And if I wanted it to be three x, y is less than three x, right? Then that would be all the points below that line, which means on our angle bisector, this will always be a positive expression. So we can then set it equal to, you do have to have some basic understanding of how inequalities work to get this kind of stuff correct. 
here we go. We're going to have 3x sub naught minus y sub naught um, over root. No, no, no. We already got rid of that. So that's gone. This is it. This is what we have. So um, we're not timesing anything. We've got the root 5 over here. Let's distribute and move things across and all that and finish this problem off. And we've got root 5y sub naught minus root 5x sub naught equals, I'm just going to leave it there. I'm going to move the negative to where it's positive and factor out the x sub naught simultaneously. I'm going to get 3 plus root 5 x sub naught. Moving this over becomes positive. I'm going to pick it root 5 plus 1 y sub naught equals that expression. Now, uh, this I want to divide. Remember we said it, the slope is y sub naught over x sub naught. So I need this to stay here. I need this to come underneath it. A big thing I say is create what you want. If that's what you want, just create it. Move this over there. All we got to do is the cleanup. 3 plus root 5 over, um, I'm going to write it now, root 5 minus 1 over 5 minus 1 is 4. What did I just do? I multiplied by the conjugate of the denominator. I didn't have to write it because I saw it in my mind. If you want to see it, I'll show you really quick. But on my paper, that's exactly what I do. Root 5 plus 1 times root 5 minus 1. Why don't I do this on my paper? Well. Maybe you should. You could make mistakes. I've just gotten to the point where I'm not going to make a mistake on that. Okay? If I was taking the actual test, though, like I was going to, this is on the line for any qualification, you know, I might find myself doing that depending on how I'm feeling. If you're feeling like Superman or Superwoman or whatever, and you're like, you know, just flying through, you're super, everything is going your way, maybe I don't write it. If I'm like uh, a little lethargic or something, I don't know, didn't sleep well, anxiety, I'd probably write it just to be safe. Okay? So, this is 5 minus 1, it's difference of squares, you get 4, let's distribute the top. 3 root 5 minus 3, root 5 times 5, root 5 is plus 5, root 5 minus times negative 1 is negative root 5 over 4. 3 root 5 minus root 5, I'm going to write it here, 2 root 5, negative 3 plus 5 is 2 over 4, cancel the 2, get root 5 plus 1 over 2. Hey. You know what that is? It's the second word in the phrase of Jack and the Beanstalk's giant. Phi Phi. It's Phi. P H I. It's not what he used to spell F I there. It's this. It's also known as the golden ratio. Very, very famous. It's as famous as pi or E. Maybe not quite as famous as pi because people know about that more in the general population. But it's really powerful. Look up a book about the golden ratio. There's all kinds of them written cool little interesting factoids about it that you can find and they snuck it in here as answer choice a